In this video, we're going to go over how to add 3D HVAC and ducting into your plan. We will discuss how to place molding that acts as a spiral duct, along with placing and editing transitions and vents. This video uses a special HVAC bonus catalog available with SSA. So the first step is to download the spiral ducting bonus catalog from the Chief Architect 3D library. From within Chief, go to Library, Get Additional Content Online. This will open your web browser and bring you over to the Chief Architect 3D Library. From here, if you do a search for Spiral Ducting and press Enter, it will bring up the catalog used in this video. Make sure you are logged into your Chief Architect account with Active SSA, download the catalog, and import it into Chief. In my case, I've already brought the catalog into Chief. And if we open up the library browser on the right hand side and then go down to the bonus catalog section and then scroll down to HVAC, this bonus catalog is going to be the HVAC number two spiral ducting catalog. You'll notice here that there's going to be folders for transitions, supports, and vents. These folders are really items that are interior fixtures. And then there's an item in this folder called galvanized steel, which is a material and then an item called spiral ducting, which is really a molding profile we will be using. Let's go ahead and close the library browser for now and press spacebar. And the first step to adding the duct into plan is to draw a CAD line where you want it to be located. So I'm gonna go up to my CAD tools, select lines, and then draw a line, and then click and draw a CAD line approximately where I want the duct to be located. Next, we're going to convert this CAD line to a molding profile and choose the spiral duct molding. So I'm going to select the line and in the bottom toolbar there's an option here that says convert polyline. From here we're going to tell the program that we're going to be converting to a molding and click on OK. Next, this will bring up the molding polyline specification and on the left hand side there's an option that says moldings. From here, I'm going to click on Add New, and this will open up the library browser where we can pick a molding. I'm going to go to the Bonus Catalog section, go down to the HVAC number 2 Spiral Ducting Catalog, select Spiral Duct, and then click on OK. Next, if you wanted to make any adjustments to the size of the duct, you can do so here. But in this case, we're not going to make any adjustments at this moment, but we will make a mental note that the size is 12 and 3 eighths of an inch. And then we're just going to press on OK. And then next, we can view this in 3D by going up to our camera tools and clicking and pointing a full camera at the duct. And you can see how that's coming in in 3D. Let's look at a couple other edits we can make in the floor plan view by going back to our floor plan tab and pressing space bar and then zooming in on the molding and selecting it. You'll notice that the molding is protruding to the upper side of this line. And if we would rather that it protrude to the lower side of this line, in the bottom toolbar, there's an option here that says reverse direction. And if we click on it, you can see how it flips it down to the lower side of the line. Let's go ahead and flip it back to the upper side of the line. And then next, if we wanted to be very specific with this molding's location, we can dimension it from walls or other objects. To dimension it, I'm gonna go up to our dimension tools in the top toolbar and I'm going to select the end-to-end -end dimension and then I'm going to click and drag a dimension going from the line to the wall and you'll notice that in this plan view the dimension snapped to the exterior framing layer but we can bring it back to the interior surface by selecting the dimension and then selecting the diamond handle and then just moving it back to the interior surface. Next if we press spacebar and select the molding we can then select the dimension and redimension how far we want it from the wall. If we look back in our 3D view, one thing you'll have noticed is that the duct is resting on our floor and I would like for it to be suspended six inches from the ceiling. If we press spacebar, double click on the duct, you'll notice here that there's a field that says height. This height field is measured from the top of the subfloor to the bottom of the duct, which makes it important to know your finished floor thickness since the floor finish rests on top of the subfloor along with knowing your room height and the duct height. We've already made a mental note that the duct height is 12 and 3 eighths of an inch. So next, let's take a look at the finished floor thickness and the room height. I'm gonna cancel out of this dialog, click once in the room, 
and then in the bottom left hand corner click on the open object specification. On the left hand side I'm going to go to the structure panel and you can see the finished ceiling value which is really the room height is 120 inches and on the right hand side in that diagram you can see that value light up. And then down below we can see the floor finish which is 7 eighths of an inch and you can see that in the diagram on the right hand side. And if we zoom in close you can see that that value is measured from the top of the subfloor. So adding those two values up, I'm going to make a mental note that from the top of the subfloor to the top of the finished ceiling is 120 and 7 eighths of an inch. I'm going to cancel out of this dialog and then double click on the duct and then I'm going to enter in that 120 and 7 eighths of an inch value into the height field of the duct. And then I'm going to take the height of the duct off to account for where the bottom of the duct resides. So I'm going to subtract 12 and 3 eighths of an inch from the R height and click on OK. And you can now see how that duct is positioned underneath the ceiling. And if I wanted it suspended 6 inches from the ceiling, I can open up the duct specification, subtract another 6 inches and click on OK. And now the duct is suspended 6 inches from the ceiling. Next, let's press spacebar and open up the library browser and take a look at some of these transitions. There are three folders for transitions, 90 degree transitions, angled transitions, and straight transitions. These different transitions all work the same in that you're placing a fixture and adjusting its size and position. Let's start off by looking at this simple stamped 90 degree transition. So I'm going to go back to our floor plan view and I'm going to zoom into this corner over here and you can see that with that stamped 90 degree transition I can just click once and place it in the plan. I'm going to press spacebar, select the transition and rotating it so it's coming off the end of the duct and using the square move handle I'm going to hold control and then just move it until it's in position with the duct. Next if we go back to the 3D view and rotate so that we're looking at the corner over here. You can see that the transition is positioned lower than the duct. If we press spacebar and double click on our duct, I'm going to press control C to copy our height value. And remember this is going from the top of the subfloor to the bottom of the duct. And then press cancel. And then I'm going to double click on the transition. And here under elevation reference, we're measuring from the finished floor to the bottom of the transition. So under the finished floor to bottom value, I'm just going to highlight the current value and press Control V to override it. Next, since we're dimensioning from the top of the finished floor, we do not need to include the floor finish thickness. So I'm going to subtract 7 eighths of an inch and click on OK. And there you can see we have that transition in position. Next we need another duct coming off of this transition. The easiest way to do that is to copy our existing duct and reflect it about the transition. So I'm going to go back to our floor plan view and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a CAD line going at an angle through the transition. So I'm going to go up to the CAD line tools and then I'm going to come over to the transition and notice how I'm moving my mouse along the edge of the transition's border and once I'm in the corner I'll snap to it. And then I'll just left click and draw a CAD line going through the transition. Next I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, press space bar to select objects, select our molding, and then in the bottom left hand corner select copy, and then reflect about object, and then reflect it about that CAD line, and there you can see where it's going in the plan, and then I'm just going to shorten up its length quite a bit. And if we look in the 3D view, you can see how that's coming in. Next, let's look at how to account for if your transitions go from having a larger diameter to a smaller diameter. I'm going to jump back into our floor plan view and then under the straight transitions folder, select one of these objects and then come into our plan, click once to place it, and then again select it and hold control to move it in position. In our 3D view, you can see that we need to move it up so that it's coming off of the duct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this 90 degree transition copy the finished floor to bottom value by pressing Control C and then opening up this transition and then pasting the value into this object's finished floor to bottom field and click on OK and now you can see that that object is in position. 
Next, we need a smaller duct coming off of this transition. The first step here is measuring the smaller end's diameter. To do this, I'm going to get into a backlipped view, going through the end of the object, and measure the diameter. So I'm going to jump back into our floor plan, and then go up to our camera tools, select the backlipped cross section, and then click and drag a small clip going through the end of the object. Next, I'm going to zoom in close to it, and then use our dimensioning tools to dimension the diameter. So I'm going to go up to our dimension tools, and I'm going to select the tape measure tool, and then I'm just going to come over to the object, hold control, and then measure the diameter of the object. I'm going to round that to about 9 inches for the diameter of the object, and just make a mental note of that, and then jump back into our floor plan view, press spacebar, select the duct, and then make a copy of it, reflect it about another object, I'm going to reflect it about this object, and with that duct still selected, I'm going to open up its specification, and then go down to the moldings panel, and then here we're going to change both the width and the height to be 9 inches, and then click on OK, and then in our floor plan view I'm just going to select it and move it into position, and if we look in the 3D view, you can see that its height needs to be adjusted a little bit. So with that back clip cross section view still open, I'm going to get into the view and then I'm just going to take a measurement going from the bottom of the duct to the bottom of the object and I'm once again have that tape measure tool selected and I'm holding control to take this measurement. And so I need to raise the duct about one and three quarters of an inch and I'm going to press space bar, double click on the duct to open up its specification and then just add one and three quarters of an inch to the height and click on OK. And there we can see that it's in position. And if we take a look in our 3D view, you can see how that's coming into the plan. The next object to look at is these ceiling supports. I'm going to go ahead and close our cross section view and jump back to our floor plan view. And I'm just going to place our, our support band over in this area of the plan. And then I'm going to press space bar select it, and then use the handle to resize it so that it's stretching across the duct. And when I release my mouse, we're going to get a message asking if we want to regenerate how it looks in the 2D floor plan view. And for this, we want to click on yes. And then if we go to the 3D view, you can see how that's starting to come in. And then what I'm going to do is press space bar and then select it. And then use the little resize handle at the bottom to resize it so that it's positioned underneath the duct. From here, if you needed more support bands for these ducts, you can get back into the floor plan view, copy the band, and position it where needed. And the last objects to look at are these vents. These vents behave just like the transitions in that they are objects you add into the plan, resize them, and move them into position. Let's jump back to the floor plan view, and then I'm just going to select this circular ceiling vent, and then I'm going to click once to place it over the duct. If we look back in the 3D view, you can see how that's coming in, and I'm just going to select it and then move it so that it's going up into the duct. And that's going to conclude this video.